Hello, Maisa. Is I'm audible to you? Yes, sir. Let's wait for other students to join. Okay. Let not be what we Okay, sir. Hello, Amal. Who are you? Is I'm audible? Yes, sir. I'm fine. How are you? I'm also fine. Okay, Amal. Uh, and Marcia. Uh, today, uh, we will going to discuss some important topics. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Avas, and I'm the HOD of this department, okay, 9th and 10th standard. Sometimes I used to take the class whether the students are performing well or not. Let me check whether how they are able to do the question properly or not. Okay. So today I'm going to take your class to check whether how you are performing or not. Okay. If you are performing well, then it will be very fine, very okay. Okay. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh I come to know that uh you were doing is matter around us pure in the chemistry, may I know that which last topic which were you were performing, you were doing? Maisia, is I'm pro uh, pronouncing the correct, the correct way? Rumasa. Rumasa. Yeah, no sir, Rumasa. Rumasa, okay Rumasa. Uh, Rumasa, tell me beta, uh, which topic you were, you were performing, you were doing in the class. I think you were doing uh, concentrations, no? Yes, sir. You were doing concentrations. Okay. So, let's start, okay? Let's start. So, let me ask first of all that in this chapter, what we are going to study, okay? Is matter around us pure? Okay? Is... Is matter around us, around us pure? Okay. Around us pure. Let me check. So, first of all, you were very much, very much familiar that what actually the matter is. What is a matter? Anything that occupies space and has the mass. Very good. Anything that occupies space and has mass is called? Matter. Okay. Very good. And what are pure substance according to the chemistry? What are pure substance? What are pure substance according to chemistry? Hmm? What are pure substance? Is there anyone who can help me on finding the correct answer for this question? Um, pure substances are substances that are made of only one kind of particle. Okay, they are made up of only one kind of particles. Okay, very good. You are saying that pure substances are those substances that are that are made up of that are made up of, up of only one kind of particle. Okay, only only one kinds of particle. Very good. The correct one, okay? give the right answer. Okay, so if I'm saying that water H2O is it a pure substance? A pure substance? No, sir. No, according to you, water is not considered to be a pure substance. Why? Why? Maisa and Aman, let me know. Muhammad, 
How are you? Sir, sir, it is a pure, it, it is a pure substance. It is a PR substance. What is a PR substance? Yes, sir. So you we have written here that those substances that are made up of only one kind of particle, one kind of particle. So here the two types of substance are present. That is hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. So how can you say that water is pure? It is made up of two different substances, now hydrogen and oxygen. And why we are considering it as a pure substance? So because it only has one type of molecule. Yeah, because it is made up of only one type of molecule. Okay, let's let understand this one. Let me explain you. This is hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen gas when react with oxygen gas. Or when hydrogens burn in air, hydrogen burns in air, burns in air. Okay, then it gives water. That gives water. Okay, H two O gives H two O. Is is my voice is clearly audible or it is lagging or something? Are you? No, sir, it's audible. It's audible, sir. Okay, okay so so let's let uh, let me explain you that hydrogens when burns in air. Okay, it produces water. It simply gives water. Now you know that hydrogen is a fuel. Are very much familiar that hydrogen gas is a act as a fuel. It is used in rockets and other spacecraft substances. Okay, so hydrogen is a good fuel. In oxygen, help in combustion. Help in combustion. But what does water do? Water is liquid. First of all, it is a gas. It is also a gas. But water is liquid, okay? It is liquid, and you know that this water extinguish fire, extinguish fire. So what actually you see that here that hydrogen is a fuel, oxygen is a help uh, is a substance that help in combustion. Means without oxygen, nothing can be burned, okay? And here, water is. We can simply say that water extinguish fire. Mohammad, please unmute your mic. Okay, and and give me the answers. Okay. So, so let us uh, that water is a water is a substance that is extinguishing fire. Do you know that? Is any property of hydrogen and oxygen is shown by water? You will just think, think a man with a gun, okay? And you give him some other substances or uh, means just there is a notorious man, okay, who used to loot out the people and he's a very bad guy, okay? And when you give him the gun, then it will become more notorious or we can say that it will become, he will become more dangerous. But imagine if that man start doing charity. He was very bad guy. He used to have gun. But imagine when he is have uh, when he is having a gun, and he start doing charity, start doing good good things. So the man, you can imagine here the same condition that hydrogen is a is a fuel, oxygen helping combustion. But water is extinguishing the fire. It is not showing the property of hydrogen and oxygen. So that's why. Here we will say that water is entirely a new substance, new substance, new substance in which the chemical properties, or we can say that the properties of hydrogen oxygen is not shown. Means the constituents, constituents from which, which water is made up of. Water is made up of is not shown. Is not the constraint from which water is uh, made up of, okay, is not showing, showing their property, their property. They are not showing their property. Hydrogen is a fuel, but in water it is not acting as a fuel. Oxygen help in combustion, but in water it is not helping in combustion. But you, know, it is extinguishing the fire. Here the water is liquid. It has its own melting and boiling point. That is. Hundred degrees Celsius, 
is its boiling point and zero degree Celsius is freezing point. However, hydrogen boils at minus one ninety five degree Celsius temperature. Oxygen boils at minus one eighty seven degree Celsius temperature. So you can easily find out that the properties of hydrogen oxygen is not shown by water. So we will consider this H two O as a new substance. It is a new substance, new substance, and we will consider it as as one particle. Whole water molecule will be considered as one particle. We'll consider it as one particle. Okay, we will consider it as one particle. So here the particle does not means the atoms. If we are saying, if we are giving the definitions of of pure substance, pure substance. What are pure substances? That are made up of only one kinds of particles. And particles can be an atom, it can be an ions, or it can be a molecule. It can be a molecule. A molecule is made up of two or more same or different kinds of atoms. So here, water is a molecule. H two O is a molecule. Okay, and this whole H two O will be considered as a new substance, and we will consider it as a particle, a different particle in the form of molecule that is not showing the property of hydrogen oxygen. That's why we will consider it water as a pure substance. Okay, now take another example for better understanding. Take another another. Let us take another example. If I am having, let's suppose if I am having a glass of water. Okay, and you, when you take a sip of it, you will feel that it is a it is simply a water like taste. Okay, you will can easily imagine. You can easily understand that I am drinking the water. Okay. Because if you are have holding a water and you take a sip, then you can easily understand that is the water because you know the taste of water. Okay. Now you add some salt to it. Now you add some salt to it, and the taste of this water, this solution will become salty. Now add some. Now add some sugar to it. Sugar to it. Then the salt, then the taste of that substance will become salty. Salty as well as sweet. Okay, then add some lemon to it. Then it will become sour, sour. Okay, because of lemon. So it after the change when you drink it, you will feel the taste of salt. You will feel the taste of uh, sweet, and you will feel the taste of sour. Okay, the three of them are showing their properties after the change. That's why. This will not be considered as a pure substance because they are this is, it is made up of different kinds of substance, and all of them are showing their properties. But in case of water, hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen is not showing its property. Oxygen is not showing its property. As a whole, water is showing its own property. Got it? Now you understood that. What is the difference between uh, what, why we are saying that uh, water is a kind of particle H two O is kind of particle and it is a pure substance because this whole will be treated as a one molecule and a pure substance. Now you understood, Muhammad, Umaisa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amal. Yes, understood. Understood. Clear. Is there any doubt? No. No, sir. Okay. So now you, uh, your mayor's family. Let me ask some more questions regarding to this chapter. Okay, tell me what is an element? What is an element? It Let is a pure substance that is made up of only one kind of atoms. Okay, what is what is element? So elements that is made up of only one kinds of. Actually, can we cannot define the definition of an? We cannot define the definition of element. Elements. we can define the definition of yeah we can only explain the definition of n element n element what is n element we cannot say what are elements elements kya hote we cannot explain that we can simply say that what is an element so what is an element an element very good very good shabash okay so what is an element it simply means that those substance that are made up of only one kind of particles Atom. or atoms sorry Atoms. Okay, that are made up of one. So, what is an element? So, we can simply define it that is made up of only one kind of. That is made up of only one kind of atom. Okay, made up of, made up of only one kind of 
atoms. Do different elements have different kinds of atoms? Do different elements have different kinds of atoms? Tell me. Bhai sahab, tell me, beta. Try, you are doing very good. Do different elements have different kinds of atoms? For example, if I'm going to take the examples of iron, and other than I'm taking the example of gold, this is iron, iron strip. Let I have taken the iron substance, iron strip, and I'm taking the another strip of gold. Okay, do these the atoms of gold and iron are different, or they will be similar, the same? Any idea? Former. Amal, any idea? No, let me explain you. Yeah, we can simply say that the different elements, different elements have different, different kinds of atoms, different kinds of atoms. Different elements have different kinds of atoms. Why? Why we can say this one? Okay. Just like little example. I'm saying that there are different, different kinds of, if I'm just going to give an example of hydrogen, hydrogen atom and oxygen atom. And let's take another example of nitrogen, N2, nitrogen, nitrogen, okay. Nitrogen. Okay. The hydrogen atom is one. That is just like one nucleus in, in, in between and it is going to have only one electron in its outer motion. Oxygen atom is just like one nucleus at the center, two electrons in this first shell and six electrons in the outermost shell. Three and three, three and three, six and one, seven and one, seven. Okay, so this will be so this will be the okay. Now, moreover, let's take an example of nitrogen. Nitrogen, the first two two electrons that we're going to study in the in the next chapter also that how is the structure of this one is made and how why I'm writing here one two three. Okay. So this one is one two three four five. Okay, nitrogen is one with the two in the first shell and five in the three and two five. Its electron configuration is 2,5, its electronic configuration is 2,6, and hydrogen is only 1. Okay. So the atoms of different elements are different. Okay. If suppose this one is nitrogen atoms, and the difference between is only just of one electron. If I put one electron from oxygen to this one, the nitrogen will start behaving like oxygen. So what is that? It is making the atoms different or the materials of different elements, or we can say that gold is different from iron, gold is different from copper, sodium is different from uh, magnesium, sodium is different from calcium, sodium is different from uh, oxygen gas. What is that thing? What is making the, these atoms or these elements different? It is their, it is the their type, or we can say that the structure of their atom, the structure. The hydrogen atoms has only one electron. The oxygen atoms has two in the first, and this one is uh, six in the other other shell. And uh, in the oxygen, this is two in the first and third, and five in the other shells. Okay, so you can simply consider that different elements have different kinds of atoms. That's why we can simply say that. Okay, we can simply say that oxygen is different from nitrogen gas just because of their atomic structures, or we can say that number of electrons. You got it? So same elements yes, have, sir. same elements have same kinds of atoms. And that will, there is also an exception here, that, but we'll discuss that one in the next, uh, in the next chapter, that how we can say that, uh, according to Dalton theory, there is a postulate of Dalton atomic theory that we're going to study in the next chapter, that Dalton says that same, same elements, elements have same kinds of atom same yes uh, similar 
similar kind of atom but it is incorrect how it is incorrect that we are going to study in the in the next chapter but most of the time if you are taking the iron as an atom so most of the time the iron atoms are similar to the iron that is taken from different different perspective for example if you are just going to take the hydrogen gas whether you are taking it hydrogen gas from by just splitting the water molecules when you pass electricity to it electricity to it okay and you will find hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas and when hydrogen gas uh, so when acid react with metals there there are so many ways that hydrogen gas can be produced but if you are if i am saying that it is a hydrogen gas then it must have one electron in its outermost shell its atom must have one electron in its outermost shell okay it is fixed it is the identity of hydrogen atom so it is the number of electrons that make the atoms different so we can simply said that different elements have different elements noted down different elements have different kinds of atom different kinds of atoms atoms due to bas itna hi okay aur reason kya hai iska why uh, how can you differ the atoms are differ by number of electrons different number of electrons okay atoms atoms of different elements different elements are differ differ by different number of number of electrons you got it got it so you can i go pay hmm can i go pay can i go pray pray sir again you want to understand go pray oh you want to pray yes sir okay okay come pass okay. so different kinds of uh, different elements have different kinds of atoms so let's let's explain one more one or two question from this one let's take one two question from this one okay so tell me which one which one will be considered as uh, uh, which one is a correct option for the first one which of the following is pure and are pure for uh, which of the following statements are true for pure substance tell me hmm? mohammed and my sir tell me which one is correct so 1 and 3 1 and 3 three to the following statement are true for pure substance contains only one kinds of particle yes it is true pure substance may be compound or mixtures no mixtures that is incorrect ye this one is not true second one okay and the third one is pure substance have same composition throughout the solution yes pure substance have same composition throughout the solution pure substance can be exemplified by all elements other than nickel no nickel is also a pure substance so it cannot be exemplified other than nickel nickel is also an element okay like copper is an element like calcium is an element magnesium is an element gold is an element like similarly nickel is also an element so one and three is the correct option very good part of you you know that uh, have you been uh, studied uh, the difference between a true solution true solution suspensions suspensions and colloids what is the major difference between true solution suspension and colloids tell me the you need to participate in the class okay answer 
What is, what is true solution? Have you studied this one? What is true solution? Suspensions and collide and what is the major difference between these? Hmm. Why, sir? So, true solution is a homogeneous mixture uh, of two or more substances. Okay, this is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. And what is suspensions and colloids? Are they homogeneous or heterogeneous? Uh, so both collide and suspension are heterogeneous mixtures of two or more substances. Both of them are heterogeneous. Okay. 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 You know that two solutions are almost similar. Two solutions. Two solutions are almost similar to the colloids. Okay. Two solutions are almost similar to the colloids. Okay. Like uh, you can simply say that. Uh, blood is a colloid, okay, blood, milk, and here it is salt solution, salt solution, okay, and another, let's like, take an example of sugar and sweet, okay, so both of them are almost same, they are, we can simply say that the particle of true solution does not settle down here, the particle of colloids also does not settle down, or we can simply say that uh, the true solutions in true solution the particles cannot be seen by naked eyes here the colloids the, in, in colloids the particle can also be not seen by naked side naked eye okay so what is the major difference why we say that colloids are heterogeneous mixtures whether they almost have the same uh, similar characteristics the particle size of almost are similar means almost uh, they cannot be seen by naked eyes both of them they don't settle down they are continuously moving Etc. Etc. What is the major difference that that is separating these two? Is there any? What is the major difference between two solutions and colloids? Hmm? I saw. Is there any difference? Amal, Amal went to for Namaz or prayer or for Muhammad went? No, Amal went. Muhammad, are you there? Hello. Muhammad, please unmute your mic. Okay. Let me explain you here. Okay. What is actually, what is the major difference between the correct and the true solutions? Okay. Are you there, Muhammad? Okay, let me explain you. Yes, yes. So let me explain you what is the major difference. Okay, that I am taking the first time taking the in this bigger. Let I am taking the uh, true solution. True solution. Okay, this one is true solution. And uh, if I am passing, this one is true solution. Okay, and this is filled with water. Okay. And if I take the glass, okay, and if I'm passing the beam of light through it, if I'm passing the beam of light through it, what would happen? And if I'm taking the, or if I'm passing the beam of light through this colloids, this one is true solution and this one is colloids. Are you getting any point now? If I, this is a torch light and if I'm passing through this one, in which of these will be the path of light will be visible? Let me plug in the charger, okay? Tell me, dear students, 
In which of the following the path of the light will be visible? Tell me. In what make the things visible to us? What make the things visible to us? If you are seeing your laptop in front of you, then what is that thing that is making it visible to you? Hmm? Madam? Light. Light. It is a reflection. It is a reflection. When we see things, okay, this one is, suppose this one is a tube light or something that is uh, glowing at our home. Okay? And this one is an object. When it, when the light falls on it, there are so many types of radiations. Okay? And then it comes to the observer eyes. When the reflected light come to the observer eyes, okay, then, then only the thing is visible to us. Okay. If this light cuts down, then there will be no reflections of light will be taking place and these things will, whole will not be visible to us. So if the light is coming from an object and it is strike on that object and comes to our eyes, then it is visible to us. Okay. Now, what, what happens when in case of true solution, true solution, the particle is so small, the particle is so, is so small. Let's, let's take an example. The particle is so small here that light, the beam of light will pass through it and there will be no sparkling of light. Means if the object, what would happen if there is an object, let's suppose this is a particle and light beam is coming to it. So it will strike on this particle and then it will, it will scatter in all the directions. Okay. If I'm observer, here, if this is my eyes, then this beam of light will make this particle visible to me. Same. Okay. The another, if it is, this one will be visible to us. Okay. So at different, different angles, the particle will be visible to us. But what if the particle size is so small that it will not allow to light to scatter? Let's imagine that here is particle sum, but it is so small that light does not scatter. Okay. So what would happen here in this case? the light will pass through it and there will be no path of the light will be visible to us. No path of light will be visible. Will be visible to us. Okay. But in case of colloids, in case of colloids, the particle is much larger, much, la much larger in size that it will scatter the beam of light. When the light will fall on it, it will scatter the beam of light. Okay. And this particle is visible because it is scattering the light. And, and uh, simply we can say that the path of the light will be visible to us. Path of the light. Path of the light will be, will be visible to us. So this is this is the major difference. This is the major difference that makes the collides in the true solution separated. Otherwise, most of the in, at most of the property, or we can say that uh, most of them uh, collides and suspensions are mm -hmm. having the same properties. But here, you can simply say that uh, the collides and true solutions are separated uh, from each other, and uh, these these are have, these have been put in the true in the homogeneous mixtures, homogeneous mixture, and this one because of this property because of this property okay uh, that it is scattering the beam of light the collides has been put in the heterogeneous mixtures so we, have, we are just putting this one in heterogeneous mixtures okay why we are putting this one heterogeneous mixtures moreover you need to understood that this scattering of beam of light is called tyndall effect what we call it tyndall effect tyndall effect okay we'll call it tyndall effect So we can say that simply that uh, the heterogeneous mixtures of colloids okay, show Tyndall effect and true solution do not show Tyndall effect. Do not, do not show Tyndall effect. Okay, do, it do not show the Tyndall effect. Got it? Yes, sir. Got, got it. So please copy this one. Then we're going to discuss the next topic that we're going to do. Okay. okay, write it down. Make a rough note. That this is the only property that makes the things uh, uh, done, sir. 
Dan yes. others, others, Ahmed, sorry, Aman. Yes, done. Yes, sir. Aman. Oh, you come back. Okay, Muhammad. Yes. Done. Okay, let's move further. Let's move further. Okay. Now let's we let let us discuss that uh, that we were studying in the previous class uh, or your ma'am was teaching you. Let us discuss that topic in detail. Okay. That was concentration you were studying in the previous class. Okay, concentration terms, mass by mass percentage. We have just three types of concentration term that we're going to discuss. Okay, mass by mass percentage, mass by volume percentage, and mass by sorry, volume by volume percentage. Okay. So, have you written the definition of this? That mass by mass percentage means in your copy that what is what do you mean by the mass by mass percentage? Actually, that uh, when a so, when a mixture is made, okay, and then we don't know that how much amount or uh, what is the amount of uh, or how can we compare them? Okay, which one is best? For example, if uh, we are just having a petrol, okay, so which which kind? Means we uh, we simply say that uh, whether the petrol is very good or not, it is pure or not pure. How much impurities does it have? Like we are just going to have the gold, so we have twenty four karat gold, we have twenty two karat gold, the purest is twenty four karat gold. So there are different different ways that mixtures. Are generally being uh, we generally use different methods to calculate the purity or the substance that how it it is it is going to have some uh, solvent and solute. Okay, for example, how a mixture is formed. Mixture. First of all, let me discuss how a mixture is formed. Mixture is formed. A mixture is formed when solute is added to solvent. Okay, solute is generally. Uh, we can say that a small quantity substance that we generally mix and solvent is bigger, but uh, it may be, may, may be different in different cases. Okay. But you know, uh, just you are in just ninth standard. So let's only discuss this one that a solute, like for example, if I'm having a uh, solution of water, okay, water, water, and this one is I add sugar to it. Okay. I add sugar to it. Okay. So this one will be considered as okay, uh, a solution that is called sugar solution. Sugar, sugar solution. Okay. Now let me discuss uh, that how can we how can we generally uh, characterize or we can say that how we generally find out how we calculate whether the substance of uh, or the percentage of solute and solvent in a solution. So there are different different ways that we generally use. And these are called the concentration terms. Concentration terms. Okay. So they are the three, generally three concentration terms that we are uh, uh, going to discuss in the ninth standard. One is mass by mass, mass by mass, volume percentage. Mass by mass, sorry, mass by mass percentage first. Second one is, second one is mass by volume percentage. Mass by volume percentage, volume percentage, okay, and third one is mass by, sorry, volume by volume percentage, volume by volume percentage, okay, let me explain one by one all of them, that what is mass by mass percentage, what is mass by volume percentage, and what is volume by volume percentage, okay, let us discuss, so let's discuss what is mass by mass percentage, mass by mass percentage okay it is that when x gram of solute is dissolved in 100 100 gram of solution this is this is mass the mass the unit standard unit of mass is grams and this is also mass this is also grams so we'll say that when x gram x gram of solute is mixed or dissolved you can say is mixed or dissolved dissolved in 100 gram of solution. Okay. Got it? Note it down. Write a, okay. When x grams of solute is dissolved in, sorry. Okay. That is solution. Okay. Solution. 
solution. Okay, and x gram of solute is dissolved in hundred gram of in hundred gram of solution solvent. Write it down. Okay, so you can simply write it like this way that uh, that W by W percentage is equals to mass of solute in grams, mass of, I'm writing here solute, I have to write, I write solution, I'm speaking solute, I'm writing solution, mass of solution in grams and then into, okay. Have you written this one? Tell me, Vita. So, yes, Vaisa, sir. have you written? Okay. Yes, sir. Done. Done. So, what does this mean? If I'm saying that I am going to have 40% solution by mass, 40% solution, 40 per, means if it is being given to you that 40% of solution of NaCl is present is present in 200 gram of solution. What does this statement mean? What does this statement mean? Write it down first. 40% of 40% of solution. Okay. If it is 40%, it is not being given that it is mass by mass or mass by volume. So you understood that it is mass by volume. Sorry, volume by volume. Sorry, mass by mass. W by W means mass by mass. Okay. Note it down. Done? Yes, sir. So let's take an example here that if I'm explaining you something that 40%, 40% mass by mass volume, sorry, mass by mass concentration is being given to you that 40%. So it means that in every 100 gram of solution, 40 gram is NaCl. NaCl is sodium chloride. Okay. So if I'm saying that 40%, 40% mass by mass solution, solution of NaCl is given, is given to you, okay, is given to you. But it, it means that every 100 gram, to, okay, for example, just I'm going to explain you the concept of this, okay. The 40% mass by mass solution of NaCl is given to you. So what does this, what is, what uh, information you are getting, right? First information is that in every every hundred gram of NaCl, okay, forty gram of NaCl solution, okay, of NaCl solution, forty gram is forty gram is what NaCl sodium chloride, okay. and sixty gram is what and sixty gram is water. So if I, if you are going to take, means if you are having 80, uh, sorry, total 200 gram of solution, 200 gram, then how much grams of uh, NaCl will be there in that? If you are going to have total solution, you are having total solution, you are having 200 grams. So what does it mean? It means that in every 100 gram, it is 40. So in 200 gram, it will be 80. Okay. Got it. And 160 gram of Sorry, uh, 120 grams of water. Okay, got it? Yes, sir. Other? Understood? Let, let please write, uh, write, out, write down this question. Calculate the mass by mass percentage. This is an easy question for you. Calculate, write down this question, please. 
Calculate the mass by mass percentage. Calculate the mass by mass percentage. When 30 gram, when 30 gram of sugar is dissolved in 300 gram of water. Please confirm when you have written. Have you written, dear student? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah, now you need to calculate the according to the formula. Just so many times the student used to make mistake. Okay, mistake. Chance of mistake. Chance of mistake in this question is what is the chance of mistake? First of all, they see that this is 30 gram of solute is present. This is solute. Okay. And in 300 grams of water. So, they consider this as solution. This is not a solution. This is solvent. Water is solvent. Water is solvent. Okay. So, what in generally the students do, general mistake. Here, the general mistake is that they generally write here 30, that is the mass of solute. Upon mass of solution, they generally write it 300 into 100, then cancel one zero, two zeros from these zeros, and you get you get 10 percent. But it is actually wrong. What is the major mistake? Can anybody consider it? There is a mistake. Where is the mistake? We have to put the mass of solution, not solvent. Yeah, we have to write here the mass of solution, not solvent. So what we need to do here is that simply you have to write that mass by mass percentage. Mass by mass percentage will be equal to mass of mass of solute upon mass of solution, mass of solution into 100. And you have to write here that mass of solute. What is the mass of solute? That is 30 gram. But the mass of solution is 300 gram water plus 30 gram sugar. That would be 330. Okay. Very 330 into 100. Then this one zero will cancel out from this one. This one you will get three ones and three elevens. Then you have to divide 100 by 11. And when you divide 100 by 11, 11 9 and 99. Okay, very good. Nine point. Zero nine. Okay, very good, very good. So this one is this is the way that you need to calculate. Let's move. Uh, please write it down. Write the solution. And then we shall be moving further. Done. Done? Yes, sir. Others? Say done. Everybody? Mohammed? Done? Done? Okay. Let's move further. Let's move further. Write down this question, please. Write down this question. Calculate the mass by mass percentage. Calculate the mass by mass percentage. When 25 grams of salt is dissolved in 500 ml of water. Dissolved in 500 ml of water. And the density of water is being given to you. The density of water is 1 gram per ml. Sometimes it, it is mentioned in the question. Sometimes you need to consider that it is understandable. Just like we have the boiling temperature of water is 100 degree. If freezing temperature of water is 0 degree. 
Similarly, the density of water is considered to be as one gram per ml. Okay. So sometimes it is given, sometimes it is not given. You need to understand. Okay. First, write it down, then I'm going to explain this. Done, sir. Done. Amal, done. Yes, sir, done. Mohammed. Is Mohammed is there in the class? Are you there? The meeting. He is in the meeting, but, but he is not giving any answer. Very easy. Okay. Let's consider this one. That one is. Let's consider. What is being given to you? That here, like if I'm asking a simple question, that two liter milk and three kg, three kg mangoes will give you what in total? 2 kg, 2 liter milk, 2 liter milk and 3 kg mango. What you will get the result of these two? Can you easily add them? Hmm? Can you add them? 2 liter milk and 3 kg mango? No, you cannot add these two because this is in liter and this is in kg. Two different physical quantity cannot be added. For example, two kilometer distance and two liter milk, it cannot be added. Because distance is different and liter is different. Okay, you cannot add. Two physical, two different physical quantities cannot be added. Volume, volume is in ml and another one is mass that is in gram. It cannot be added. We cannot add these two. So there is a relationship that gives, that help us to convert ml into grams and grams into ml. And that is density. That is density. And the, what is the formula of density? The formula of density is, density is that density is equals to mass by, mass by volume. Mass by volume. Okay. Now, let's, let's consider what is it, what is being given in the question? It has been given, calculate the mass by mass percentage. It is being asked mass by mass percentage. When 25 grams of salt is dissolved in 500 ml of water. So, 500 ml of water and 25 grams of salt. What is being given to you? 25 gram of salt and 500 ml of water. We are not just calculating. We are just calculating mass by mass percentage. Means both of them should be in grams. But here it is in ml. So, we need to convert it into into we need to convert it into grams. Okay, why? Why? Because ml cannot be added. Okay, the mass of solution will be mass of solution will be equals to mass of water of water in grams plus mass of mass of salt. Okay, so we simply know that mass of salt is already in grams. It is 25 grams, but we need to convert this water into grams. So here, this will help us, density will help us to find out, to figure out this, okay. This one is that 20, sorry, density is equals to mass by volume. Here the density is given 1 gram per ml. We have put here, put in it, 1. Mass, we need to calculate. And volume is 200, uh, sorry, 500 ml. So 500 ml. This is in ml. We have written here, ml. This one is in gram. This one is in ml. Okay, so we have put it. So this this 500 will go to that side and we, according to this one this will say since this is one only so here the mass is equals to volume that is 500 gram that if the density is 0 0.75 then it will be 500 into 0 0.75 if the density is just suppose if the density is uh 1.25 then it will be 500 into 1.25 mass mass will become 500 into 1.25 means Mass is simply, mass is simple density into volume. Density into, mass is equals to density. Equals to density into volume. Got it? Density into volume. So we need to write it again here. That is, that is the mass of, mass of 500. 500 ml water is actually 500 gram because its density is 1. Simply you can write here that 
the volume by volume percentage will be equals to what? What? What should I write here? Twenty five. Hmm. Twenty five. What should I write here? Tell me. Because mass of solute is twenty five gram. So I have written here twenty five gram solute. It is the mass of solute. What will be the mass of solution? Tell me into hundred. Uh, sir, five hundred plus twenty five, five twenty five. Very good. This is five hundred gram is the mass of water now. That is five hundred ml is going to have five hundred gram mass because its density is more. Plus twenty five. That is five hundred. Most of the student used to cut this like this way. No, you cannot cut this one. First, you need to add these two. Okay, that will be five twenty five point twenty five into hundred. When you cut it. We'll get twenty-five hundred twenty-five in twenty-five twenty ones are okay. Uh, this is with five twenty-five. Now you need to divide it hundred by twenty. Whatever the answer comes, that will be the percentage. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Have you understood the topic? Yes, sir. Everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Write out the next question, please. This is the last question. Calculate the mass by volume percentage when seventy gram of solute is dissolved in hundred. What is mass by volume? This simple. That uh, let me explain first. Mass by volume. Let me explain. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. What is mass by volume percentage? Mass by mass by volume volume percentage. It is simple that if it is mass, then the it is simply the mass of solute in grams. And volume of solution, volume of solution in ml, it should be in ml, okay, into hundred. Okay, means when x gram, x gram of solute is dissolved, is dissolved in hundred ml of solution. Note it down first. Note it down. Done, sir. Done. Yes. Others. None. Others. Yes, sir. Muhammad, are you there in the class? Joint, but I think is something. Some other thing. Okay. X gram of solute is dissolved in hundred ml of solution. The question is: Just write down the question again. Calculate the mass by volume percentage. This is the last question. When seventy gram of solute is dissolved in four ninety ml of solution. Done, Done. So this is simple formula based question. It is in grams. The solute is in grams, and here it is solution is being given to you. That is four ninety mL. So just simply write seventy here. Four ninety seventy the mass of solute, the mass volume of solution because we are just calculating mass by volume percentage. So we have to write the solution in the mL, and it is also the volume of solution, not the solvent. So just no need to add seventy to it into hundred. Let's cut, okay, and then or you can simply cut it uh, into hundred. Okay, seventy seven is a four ninety. Then it is hundred divided by seven. Okay, that is fourteen point three percent of loss. Okay. Yes, sir. Understood the concept. Today's yes, concept. Okay. So, beta, uh, I need to take some classes of yours. Okay, because uh, we are just checking whether how you are performing. And we're going to take some tests regarding to the topic that you have previously uh, learned. Okay, 
uh, I am the HOD of this department. I usually take the classes when I need to check whether the students are performing very well or not. Okay. So we're going to have some classes regularly for yours and we'll continue the topics that we are doing in the classes and we're going to revise from the previous sections and we'll to, we will going to take some two or three question tests in every class. So revise your topic properly.